Hi guys and welcome to this week's video from us, the guys at Flying Raven Studio. I'm Ben and this week we're going to look again at Necromunda, but this time we're going to look at scenery. Now you see loads of different sceneries and different ideas that you can come up with, but we've got our own kind of ideas and we wanted to show you. So tag along, sit down, relax, enjoy and let's see what we can do. So let's start with the board. Now this is just one of the normal zone mortalis tiles and what I did is I cut the middle section out. I then put it on some insulation foam and then put it on some 12mm um, HDMF. Then what I did is I used some of the walls and columns sections to put it down the middle so it made it look like it was a train line inside of the hive. So let's get started then. We are going to be using one of the Necromunda boxes, the walls and columns, and this will be to build most of the main structure. The other box that we'll need is the stairs and levels, which again, fairly easy to pick up nowadays. There was a period of time where they were like gold dust. So now we can move on. Now we're going to be looking mainly at the columns to start with. We'll then move on to showing you how I build the walls afterwards. Again, not particularly difficult, but just a nice process where we can kind of work on it together and get these columns looking fantastic. So let's start with the columns. Now you need to clip these out. The best idea with this is to make sure you get as close as possible to the sections that you're cutting out, so the panels in this case. What you don't want to do is get too close so that you end up then nipping sections of the plastic of the bits that you're cutting out. So once that's done, just make sure you've got all the pieces you need and onto the Stanley blade. Now, this is a process that I use quite a lot and it's just a very, very gentle shaving off of any of the sections that have stayed proud when you've, when you've clipped the panels off of the sprues. But the other way that you do it is you then turn the knife kind of like a 45 to a 90 degree angle and push it away from you. That takes a very, very fine shiver of plastic off ideal for removing the last little bits or mold lines for example. Uh, now in this case because it's scenery and terrain it makes it a lot easier because they're big sections. It's a little bit more difficult when you're on a smaller kind of figure for example so do just take it slowly and carefully and obviously again we've all done it it's a standing blade just be careful when you're pulling it towards you you don't want it in your thumb it does hurt. So now that one is complete, and we've got the other three to do. Now I've just sped this up because you don't need to sit here and watch me painstakingly clear and file down all of these ones. But the idea is, is that you do the work now. It does take a little while, but it means on the next process that everything's gonna click together really nice and smoothly and you're not gonna end up with any gaps. So it's kind of important to do a bit of prep work now and you'll reap the rewards, as they say, later on. So now that's done, it's time to do a bit of gluing. Now I'm just using normal poly cement glue for this. And the idea is, is that you use the top as a guide to be able to build the columns. What we don't want to do at the present time is use any glue near the top section because you want to be able to pop that off later, which I'll show you later on. So just very, very small little dabs on each of the sections of the wall that you're going to glue together. Then take another piece, push them together and pop them upside down on the top. This then gives you a good structure and a good guidance of where the panels need to go. It means that the towers won't warp or anything while they're drying. Then all you do is you add to the next panel just carefully and add the final panel, make sure that you glue both sides of this one so that all of the connections are glued together. Now 
and that's one column done. So just leave that to dry and we're now going to move on to the walls. So we're going to make a couple of walls at the same time. These are the only two walls that you'll actually need for the piece of scenery that we're going to make today. So again, it's just clipping them out exactly the same as the last one. Just try and get it as close as possible. It means that there's less work to do afterwards. And do remember, you need all the pieces to be able to build the walls, not just the half that I cut out. So back to the sprue to cut a few more bits out. Right, now we've got them, we can do the cleaning up process. And again, this is exactly the same as the last process. You just have to take it kind of carefully, but make sure that once you've done it, that they are all perfectly smooth. Because again, it just means that they end up with a much better finish and a much cleaner connection between the two or three or four pieces. The larger wall sections take a little bit more time because they've got actual some quite bad mold lines, both top and sides and in fact the bottom as well. Just make sure you get rid of them because even on the bottom section, if you haven't got rid of those mold lines, they won't connect properly to the board. As you can see, it's a little bit messy, but you just have to kind of tidy up afterwards. Right, now onto the gluing section. Again, exactly the same process as before, but this time you use the top sections of the walls and click everything into them. So you take one small section and one large section, Again, dab some, a very, very small amount of glue down the sides of the large section. Click it together with the small section, turn it upside down and rest it with the top section. This does exactly the same as the process with the columns. It just means that they bind together really nicely and keep their shape correctly. And just make sure that they are lined up properly. As you can see there, I was just running my finger along it to make sure that there's no overhang or that they have not clicked together correctly. It just takes that extra few seconds, but it means that you're not gonna end up with a wall that's warped. And that's one wall done. So again, just sped this one up so that you can see it. It's exactly the same process. So now we've got both walls done, we'll bring the column back over because we now need to stick the top on. Now these columns I'm going to end up with double stacked. So what you do is you flip the top over and use it as a joining connector between the two columns. But I realized that I hadn't cleaned this up at this point. So quick bit of cleanup and then we can glue it down. These ones didn't need too much clean up, it was just the sections where I'd clip them. So now with this, I put some very, very small amount of dots of glue just in each corner. It seems to bind them enough, but it doesn't cause any glue to splurge over the edges or anything like that. And that is the columns and walls sorted.
So now let's see what I've actually built. So what we use is two columns and one wall for this section. And it goes on that side. And again, exactly the same on the other side. This gives you good height for your game and it also blocks off sections. So that means that it's more difficult to move around, which is what you want for the Necromander board. The top section has been used from the stairs and platform box, which was the other box that you need for this. Now, I built a couple of these stairs prior to that, you just glued them together, very simple. But I wanted to give it that feel so that you could access the top area, the kind of height and the advantage from a couple of different ways. This way, it also means that you can link it onto other boards so that the rail line can be as long or as short as you like. Now, for me, I've got another two or three boards that go onto this and it means that they all flow together. So let's take a look at what it looks like once it's all finished. And as you can see, it's really got that Necromunda feel. The train line running through the middle of it, the height, the advantage points, the possibilities that you can have your Goliath gang charging down a Vansar gang that's decided to try and hide at the top. So as you can see, your own train line through your own board not that difficult and with those bits of scenery that we've just worked on you can really emphasize that gang warfare that dividing line of that train line being the the part where everyone wants to fight over and take control of so i hope that's helped i hope that you've enjoyed it and i hope you've learned some things as we've gone along with it if you've got any comments please put them in the bit below and we will get back to you as quickly as possible and as always smash the subscribe button Hit the like button and ring the bell and you can stay in contact with everything that we've got coming up. So enjoy, stay safe and we will see you again.